This video is based on the standard material produced by the Unified Referral and Intake System. It is intended to provide general information about Urus Groupie healthcare needs to bus drivers. An allergy is the immune system's excessive reaction to a normally harmless substance called an allergen. Anaphylaxis is a severe allergic reaction that is typically rapid in onset. It can result in death due to airway obstruction or a severe drop in blood pressure. Items that commonly cause anaphylaxis are foods such as peanuts, tree nuts, cow's milk, eggs, fish, and soy. Other allergens may include insect stings, latex, and medication. When remembering the signs of anaphylaxis, think fast. Face, airway, stomach, total body. Watch for signs that occur suddenly or are obvious changes in appearance or behavior. Signs that may be seen in the face include red watering eyes, runny nose, redness or swelling of face, lips, and tongue, and hives with itchiness. If a person has eaten a food that contains the allergen, hives often appear around the mouth. Signs that the airway is closing include a sensation of throat tightness, hoarseness or other change of voice, difficulty swallowing, difficulty breathing, coughing, wheezing, and drooling. Signs related to the stomach are severe vomiting, diarrhea, and cramps. Signs that may involve the total body are hives with itchiness, feeling a sense of doom, change in behavior, pale or bluish skin, dizziness, fainting, and loss of consciousness. When a person is exposed to their allergen, any combination of signs may occur. Epinephrine is the medicine used to treat anaphylaxis. It reverses the dangerous symptoms involved in anaphylaxis and turns off the allergic response in the body. Epinephrine is administered into the muscle in the thigh using an auto-injector, such as an EpiPen or Allerject. If you see any combination of anaphylactic signs and there is reason to suspect that the child has been exposed to their allergen, give epinephrine immediately and activate 911. When using an EpiPen, secure the child's leg. The child should be sitting or lying down. If the child is lightheaded or dizzy, they should lie down on their back with their legs raised above heart level. If the child is vomiting, they should be placed on their side. It may be necessary to hold or straddle the child. Identify the injection area on the outer middle thigh. The EpiPen will penetrate one layer of regular clothes, but snowsuits or other bulky clothing should be removed. The middle of the thigh can be found by dividing the leg between the knee and hip into three sections and choosing the middle section. The outer portion of the thigh is found between the outer seam and center crease of a pant leg. Feel the spot with your hand to avoid seams or items in a pocket. Hold the EpiPen in a tight fist without putting your thumb over either end. Remove the safety cap by pulling it straight off. Do not bend or twist it off. Administer the EpiPen by pressing the orange tip into the thigh at a 90 degree angle until you hear or feel a click. Hold in place for a slow count of five to ensure all the medication is injected. Discard the used EpiPen by following the community program's policy for disposal of sharps or give to EMS personnel when they arrive. The EpiPen has a plastic cover that will extend and lock into place to ensure the needle is not exposed. If this did not occur, check to see if the safety cap was removed and inject again, pressing more firmly. The steps in using an Allerject are similar to the EpiPen with a few minor differences, which will be highlighted here. When using the Allerject, secure the child's leg. Identify the injection area on the outer middle thigh. Remove the allerject from its outer case. Remove the red safety cap. Firmly press the black tip into the outer middle thigh at a 90 degree angle until you hear it click. 
then hold in place for a slow count of five to ensure all the medication is injected. Discard the allergic as indicated by your community program's policy for disposal of sharps. The allergic contains an electronic voice instruction system that guides the user through the steps. The voice recording will begin when the device is removed from the outer sleeve. If the voice instruction does not work, it may still be used. When the red safety cap has been removed, the allergic is primed and must be used or discarded. After it has been administered, the black base locks into place to ensure the needle is not exposed. When a child has an anaphylactic reaction, remember to inject the epinephrine auto injector in the outer middle thigh. Call the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. A second dose of epinephrine may be administered, if available, within 5 to 15 minutes after the first dose if symptoms have not improved. Stay with the child until EMS personnel arrive. It is recommended to use a training device to practice how to give an epinephrine auto-injector while viewing this video. Identify the injection area on the outer middle thigh. Remove the blue safety cap by pulling it straight off. Firmly press the orange tip into the outer middle thigh until you hear it click. Then hold in place for a slow count of five. After the EpiPen has been used, the orange end will extend over the needle. Identify the injection area on the outer middle thigh. Remove the allergect from its outer case. Remove the red safety cap. Press the black tip into the outer middle thigh until you hear it click. Then hold in place for a slow count of five. The allergect or AVIQ has an electronic voice instruction system, which you will hear now while the demonstration is repeated. Identify the injection area on the outer middle thigh. Remove the allergect or AVIQ from its case. This trainer contains no needle or drug. If you are ready to use, pull off red safety guard. To inject, place black end against outer thigh, then press firmly and hold in place for five seconds. Five, four, three, Two, one, injection complete. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory condition where the airways are hyper-responsive to environmental factors called triggers. When the airway is exposed to triggers, inflammation, swelling, and mucus production may increase and the muscles around the airway tighten. The end result is airway narrowing. Symptoms of asthma include coughing, wheezing, which sounds like whistling from the chest when the child breathes out, chest tightness, shortness of breath, and an increase in the rate of breathing while at rest. When a child is having an asthma episode, remove them from any triggers of asthma if possible. Have the child sit down. Ensure they take the reliever medication which usually has a blue cap or bottom. Encourage slow, deep breathing. Monitor the child for improvement of asthma symptoms. If asthma symptoms do not improve in five to 10 minutes, call the dispatcher to notify the child's parent. Most asthma episodes do not lead to a medical emergency. However, the following situations are emergent. Skin pulling in under the ribs. Skin being sucked in at the ribs or throat. A grayish or bluish color in the lips and nail beds. The child cannot speak in full sentences. Their shoulders are held high or neck muscles are tight. They cannot stop coughing or they have difficulty walking. If any of these situations occur, call the dispatcher to activate 911 
and notify the child's parent. Continue to give reliever medication as prescribed every five minutes. The following video provides a demonstration on how to assist a child in using a metered dose inhaler. Shake the inhaler and remove its cap. Have the child breathe out as completely as possible. Bring the inhaler to the child's mouth, placing the mouthpiece between the teeth with lips closed around it. Push down once on the canister as the child breathes in through their mouth, slowly and deeply. Have the child hold their breath for 10 seconds or as long as comfortable, and then breathe out. If a second dose is prescribed, repeat these steps after 30 seconds. Shake the inhaler and remove its cap. Insert the mouthpiece of the inhaler into the arrow chamber. Place the mouthpiece of the arrow chamber into the child's mouth, making sure there is a tight seal. Have the child breathe out. Push down once on the canister. Have the child breathe normally, taking five to six breaths. If a second dose is prescribed, repeat these steps, waiting 30 seconds between each dose. Shake the inhaler and remove its cap. Insert the mouthpiece of the inhaler into the arrow chamber. Apply the arrow chamber so there are no leaks between the child's face and the mask. Have the child breathe out. Push down once on the canister. Have the child breathe normally, taking five to six breaths. If a second dose is prescribed, repeat these steps, waiting 30 seconds between each dose. When a bleed occurs, a blood vessel is damaged and blood leaks through the holes in the vessel wall. Platelets stick to the wall of the damaged blood vessel. Clotting proteins in the blood are activated to form a clot and the bleed stops. There are many clotting proteins in the blood that work together. With bleeding disorders, clotting proteins are missing, which breaks the chain reaction. As a result, a clot is not formed or it takes longer for the clot to form. There are several types of bleeding disorders, such as hemophilia and von Willebrand's disease. External bleeds such as surface cuts and mouth bleeds are treated with standard first aid. Wash your hands and put on gloves. Clean the child's skin. Apply firm continuous pressure until the bleed stops. If the bleed does not stop after 20 minutes, call the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. If the child has a nosebleed, Wash your hands and put on gloves. Encourage the child to gently blow their nose to remove mucus or unstable clots. Position the child with their head slightly forward. Apply firm pressure at the bridge of the nose until the bleed stops. If the bleed does not stop after 20 minutes, contact the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. An injury to the head, eye, neck, chest, or abdomen area must be considered serious and requires immediate medical attention. If a child has a significant injury to one of these areas, with or without physical symptoms, call the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. Do not move the child to prevent further injury unless they are unsafe. Cardiac conditions include congenital heart defects that occur when the heart or the blood vessels near the heart do not develop normally before birth. As a result, blood flow may be slowed down or blocked in the heart or in the vessels near the heart. Other congenital defects can cause blood to flow through the heart in an abnormal way, which causes it to work harder. Congenital heart defects can cause congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure occurs when the heart is unable to pump an adequate amount of blood to meet the body's needs. It does not mean that the heart has stopped working. Congestive heart failure can take several days or weeks to develop. 
Signs of congestive heart failure include sweating during quiet time, persistently rapid or labored breathing, shortness of breath, fast or irregular heart rate, chest pain, nasal flaring, blueness on or around the mouth, eyes, ears, or fingertips, listlessness, cannot stop coughing, skin becoming increasingly pale or blue, and suddenly tired. If the child experiences signs of congestive heart failure, have them rest. If symptoms do not improve within five to 10 minutes, call the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. Place the child in a sideline position. If the child loses consciousness, stops breathing, or has noisy gurgled breathing, call the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. Place the child in a sideline position. Keep their airway open. Loosen any tight clothing around the neck. Diabetes is a disease resulting from a lack of insulin. Insulin is required to allow glucose to enter the cells of the body and give them energy to function. There are two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the pancreas is unable to produce insulin. Therefore, daily insulin injections are required. With type 2 diabetes, the pancreas does not produce enough insulin or the body does not use it effectively. A child with type 2 diabetes may require insulin injections. Hypoglycemia occurs when the blood glucose is less than 4 millimoles per liter. It can happen within minutes of a child appearing well and will become a medical emergency if it is not treated. Symptoms of hypoglycemia include cold, clammy, or sweaty skin, tired, shakiness or lack of coordination, irritable or sudden moodiness, difficulty concentrating or confusion, staggering gait, fainting or loss of consciousness. The child may complain of nervousness, excessive hunger, headache, blurred vision, dizziness, or abdominal pain or nausea. If the child is showing signs of hypoglycemia, have them eat a fast-acting sugar, such as a juice box or candy. Wait 10 to 15 minutes. If they are still showing signs of hypoglycemia, have the child eat a second fast-acting sugar. Wait another 10 to 15 minutes. If they are still showing signs of hypoglycemia, have the child eat a third fast acting sugar and call the dispatcher to activate 911 and notify the child's parent. If in doubt, treat. If you suspect a child is experiencing hypoglycemia, treat with a fast acting sugar. The potential of eating extra sugar when their blood glucose is not low will not harm the child. However, not treating hypoglycemia can result in an emergency situation. Severe hypoglycemia occurs when the child's blood glucose level drops very low. The child may have a seizure or lose consciousness. Glucagon is a hormone that is used to treat severe hypoglycemia. Vaccine glucagon nasal powder is now available in Canada. It is a dry nasal spray that is absorbed through the nose, so it does not need to be inhaled. This video shows how to use Baximi. Today, we are going to show you how to use Baximi. Keep Baximi in the shrink wrap tube until ready to use. Remove the shrink wrap by pulling on the red stripe. Open the lid and remove the device from the tube. Caution. Do not press the plunger before insertion into the nose. Otherwise, the single dose in the device will be lost. Hold the device between fingers and thumb. Do not press plunger or test device. Insert the tip gently in the nostril until the fingers touch the outside of the nose. Push the plunger all the way in with your thumb. The dose is complete when the green line on the plunger no longer shows. Remove the tip from nose and throw away the used device and tube. 
If a child with diabetes has a seizure or loses consciousness, place them in a sideline position. Administer Baxemi if available. Call the dispatcher to activate 911 and contact the child's parent. If the child is still having a seizure or is unconscious after 15 minutes, a second dose of Baxemi may be given if available. Do not give food or fluid if the child is unconscious, having a seizure, or unable to swallow. The brain controls the body, including movements, sensations, thoughts, and emotions. It contains billions of nerve cells that communicate with each other through electrical signals. When a person has a seizure, the brain sends out an abnormal burst of electrical signals. These signals can change a person's movement, behavior, or state of awareness. A seizure is often very brief, lasting from a few seconds to a few minutes. A tonic-clonic seizure is the type of seizure that most people are familiar with. Also, any seizure type can become a tonic-clonic seizure if it does not stop on its own. During a tonic-clonic seizure, the child loses consciousness. Their body stiffens, which is the tonic phase. Then the body jerks repeatedly. This is the clonic phase. The child may cry out, clench their teeth, bite their tongue, drool, or have increased salivation. The child may have changes in breathing. Their skin may turn pale or blue-gray. They may lose bladder or bowel control. This video shows a child experiencing a tonic-clonic seizure. Please note that the child should be placed in a sideline position immediately. It's Miss Sharp. We're in the gym and you're okay, but you've had one of your seizures. You're going to be just fine. If a child has a tonic clonic seizure, place them in a sideline position to keep their airway open. Loosen any tight clothing around their neck. Move any objects away that may injure the child. Call the dispatcher to activate 911 and contact the child's parent. During a tonic-clonic seizure, do not leave the child unattended. Do not restrain them. Do not put anything in their mouth as it could cause teeth or jaw damage. Do not offer food or drink until they are fully alert. Do not place anything large under their head as it may affect the airway. The head and neck may be cushioned with something soft and small, such as a jacket. When a child has an endocrine condition, the adrenal glands do not produce the right amount of cortisol to meet the body's needs. Cortisol assists the body in coping with physical stress, such as illness and injury. A deficiency of cortisol can be life-threatening. The treatment for adrenal insufficiency is oral cortisol, which is taken daily. A stress dose of cortisol is required when a child is experiencing significant physical stress. Signs of physical stress include nausea, vomiting, fever, cold clammy skin, pale face, dark circles under the eyes, unexplained dizziness, weakness, and confusion. If the child experiences signs of physical stress, give them a stress dose of cortisol. 
call the dispatcher to notify the child's parent. If the parent cannot be reached, have the dispatcher activate 911. If the child's stress dose is not available or the child is unable to swallow it, have the dispatcher activate 911 immediately. Symptoms of acute adrenal insufficiency include severe vomiting, seizures, and loss of consciousness. If the child experiences any of these signs, call the dispatcher to activate 911 and contact the child's parent. Give the child a stress dose of cortisol if they are conscious.